Good afternoon. Thank you very much. We're um, a studio um, that crosses the boundaries of our architecture and interaction design. And we create permanent and temporary pieces for primarily the public realm. Here's a piece for the A13, a series of markers that basically create catalysts for conversation, an opportunity for people to interact with their environment. This is a piece created back in 2005 for a hotel in Madrid, an interactive lobby. Imagine you go to a hotel lobby and it changes colour with every visit to the hotel to make it different and interesting. It was the first interior in the world controlled by real-time video. We do a lot of making. A lot of the design process is um, we have a workshop downstairs and the studio like space upstairs and we prototype and some of the prototypes make their way into galleries. This is a piece looking at artistic space syntax at the Tate Britain. The hot and cold parts of the gallery and then basically testing it on groups of children. This piece was in the sculpture gallery at the Victoria and Albert Museum and it's all about memories and capturing the colours people are wearing and then playing them back through a surface. There's a matrix of RGB LEDs beneath a roll of fabric there. This project um, only lasted for three minutes. It was uh, some imaginary radio studios for the BBC and we created them in two weeks and then took them apart again. So that's a very, very temporary piece. And we're very lucky to be approached by different sectors. This is a piece for the production company that created the um, stage set for George Michael's 25 Live Tour. And here's me walking around testing a thermal camera that mapped my movement around the stage, around the cardboard cutout of George Michael. Some of our performances are slightly longer lasting. This is a piece for a Richard Rogers building in Soho. It's a lift that remembers all the movements it's undertaken during the day and plays them back at night as a performance. So it fills the time from dusk to midnight with this um, sort of symphony of light which is hacked into the um, lift's control system. Here's a series of pieces you can see in Norman Park in Hammersmith and Fulham and each piece is actually nestled into the tree which it uses as a canvas and the pieces come alive as you walk across the park. None of these pieces would be actually anything really without the people that actually interact with them. So interaction, how people interact with the environment is very much part of it. This is us doing part of the rigorous testing we do in-house of components. This is a sort of quite a serious thread of work really. It's to do with looking at renewables and energy scavenging and bringing that conversation to the fore really. Um, this is a piece at the Queen Elizabeth Hall, um, the roof thereof, I think it was several hundred micro turbines which literally converted air movements into a visible um, kind of light field. And this was a piece, um, Philips came to us and said we've got this really interesting new technology this was three or four years ago, and actually you could see this next door as an exhibit in the Tech City area. It's called Mimosa. Uh, it's a bit of biomimicry. We looked at the, um, the responses in the Mimosa plant and pl built them into these um, organic LED flowers. We were given 100 fiberglass pandas by the World Wildlife Fund, and we converted them into a moving kinetic artwork, which they sold through Christie's. And the name of the game was to earn some money for the World Wildlife Fund and also make people feel slightly uncomfortable about their interactions with the world, which you do get when you get 100 pandas looking at you in that kind of way. This piece, 144 meter long, 11,500 pixel warm white LED artwork is made up of a sort of virtual cast of the people from Sunderland who get on, on and off the trains from a side of the platform that doesn't exist anymore. It's a permanent public artwork commissioned by Nexus. And part of the thing here is about changing the spaces. This piece, it was a commission from Westfield. It's the entrance to Chestnut Plaza, which leads down into the Olympic Park. We looked at how municipal spaces are made, and this piece was a sort of metaphor for a fountain, and this we created with over 8,000 liquid crystal displays, creating a, um, a water sculpture in the park. This was actually a platform for a global series of artworks. Um, this was a collaboration with um, a whole team of people, but um, working with Mother um, in the biscuit building across the road, and we were asked to create a green box which would act as a platform for augmented reality artworks globally. This is a piece um, for More 4 with Man vs. Machine and the creative department of Channel 4, and a series of built, filmed artworks that then created the identity you see on More 4 now. Again, something built for a very sort of temporary period of time, but will live on our television screens. Great Ormond Street Hospital, new wing, 
and we basically brought the wallpaper to life and the whole rationale behind the piece is to distract children on their way to surgery and we've created this sort of half tone forest in which these digital animals appear and disappear as you're wheeled through on the route to surgery. When you go to the Olympic Park, um, this piece will be um, playing, it's a legacy piece commissioned by the ODA um, and what you can do is basically press the button and race against, let's say it's the same bolt, or whoever re re wins 100 meters, you can go and then go in a year's time and race against them. It's a multi-sensorial race. And then on the other side of the park, next to the media stand, this is a piece um, of mechatronic bubbles we've just created for Coca-Cola. Um, it's basically looking at the idea of celebration and sort of trying to crystallize that in um, kind of built form. Anyway, thank you very much and uh, <laughs> speak to you later.